Dr. Gerhard Baumann is an internationally known endocrinologist and expert in growth hormone biology. He has served the Endocrine Society in a variety of capacities, including service on the editorial board of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism and Endocrinology, as well as service on the JCEM Pfizer jury. Dr. Baumann discovered and characterized growth hormone binding protein, and currently he is Professor of Medicine Emeritus at Northwestern University. How did uh, growth hormone binding protein eventually advance the field? Uh, it's, it, well, the growth hormone binding, binding protein turned out to be a fragment of the growth hormone receptor, namely the extracellular domain that's shed from cells and floats off into the circulation and circulates as a soluble receptor fragment, which contained the binding site for the hormone. And uh, this circulating receptor uh, was relatively easy to sample and measure, as opposed to the full receptor, which is on cells and you can't really sample it in, certainly in humans very easily. And it gave us a, it gave us a, a window on receptor biology or growth hormone receptor biology and growth hormone receptor physiology, how it's regulated and how it's, uh, um, yeah, the biology of, of how, how it functions uh, in various physiological and pathophysiological states. So it was, it provided a, an assay or a measurement of growth hormone receptor abundance perhaps and uh, perhaps function that would otherwise not have been possible uh, as easily. Why did you then study <coughs> the levels of uh, growth hormone binding protein in the African pygmy? Well, we, we were looking for a number of uh, physiological states where there might be uh, abnormalities in uh, growth hormone receptor uh, biology or function. And uh, the Laurent Dwarf or the Laurent um, uh, syndrome patient would be a classical example of somebody who doesn't have, there's a genetic defect in the receptor and therefore a genetic uh, defect in the binding protein. So this, well, this was the first example. But we were looking at all kinds of uh, short stature and tall stature syndromes, uh, looking for either impaired or enhanced growth hormone action uh, via the receptor. And uh, they do have uh, low, low growth hormone binding protein. So they may have uh, abnormal growth hormone receptor, although there are different, there are other things in pygmies that uh, uh, also occur and are not explained by this uh, finding. So it's still not clear exactly what, why the pygmies are short. Okay. Nutritional, uh, nutritional effects, growth hormone resistance effects, maybe IGF-1 resistance effects, so it may be uh, multifactorial. I see. How did you find yourself on a de desert expedition to Pakistan? in the late 1990s. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting story and a fun story to tell, actually. There was this, uh, one, one day I received a letter from Karachi, Pakistan, uh, by one uh, Hiralal Maheshwari, uh, MD, PhD, who uh, said, um, who enclosed in the, in the, in the letter a uh, newspaper article uh, ent entitled The uh, Dwarfs of Sindh. Now, Sindh is the southernmost uh, uh, province of Pakistan. And uh, the article des described a village, or two villages actually, where there, were where there was a cluster of very short people. And they were all uh, related and they were all men. And it sounded like it was a, uh, either a, a genetic problem or a, uh, a local problem in the water or whatever. And uh, he asked me, would you like to study this? And uh, so it sounded interesting to me Turns out most of the marriages in, the, in those villages are consanguineous at some level, mm -hmm. uh, a high, high degree of inbreeding. So we uh, went there and we uh, studied, we did uh, pituitary function tests, we uh, measured their height and uh, uh, BMI and everything, uh, looked at their clinical phenotype in detail, we got DNA, we got RNA, we got cells, and we brought all this back uh, to, the, uh, to my lab. And again, to make a long story short, we found a mutation in the growth hormone releasing hormone receptor. Uh, actually, the first such mutation in, uh, in humans. A mouse analog had, had already been published uh, of that. And uh, 
it was a new, uh, a new uh, syndrome that had not been previously described, except a few months before our paper, another paper came out uh, from New York describing the same mutation in two patients who were short and of Pakistani descent in, uh, in New York. Wow. So we weren't quite the first, but almost. What solutions, either therapeutic or social, resulted? Well, these patients, of course, do, or they, so they have a, a, a null mutation in the growth hormone releasing hormone receptor, which means the brain cannot signal to the pituitary to either make growth hormone, to uh, make enough cells that produce growth hormone, or to release growth hormone from, from the cells that store it. <coughs> so, um, uh, therefore, they should respond to growth hormone, and in, indeed they do. So if you give them exogenous growth hormone, they respond perfectly normally. And so it's, um, it's first of all, he put this, uh, this new syndrome on a map so that people could start looking for it. So many more patients have been found since, and uh, for the, the majority has been treated with growth hormone. And in what ways has the Endocrine Society supported your professional development? The, uh, the Endocrine Society is really the home, uh, has been my home uh, scientifically and also clinically as a place uh, where you can present your work, where you meet your colleagues, and where there's a high, uh, high standard of science and also a high standard of uh, patient care. So it's been the main ho scientific uh, home uh, for me.